I came here just to see what a full pond looks like. I was expecting way more hose than this. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Oh, damn it! Welcome back to the channel. Oh, my beer. My beer. All right, today I got a fun little video for you. I do apologize for the length of the video. I tried to shrink it down as much as I could. I also want to apologize for some of the wind noise in this video. There's not that much, but it's something that I want to eliminate totally in the future. So in the future, when I'm working outdoors, I'll make sure to have my little fuzzy tickler here on my mic, and that should solve that problem. Now the timeline on this video kind of jumps around from early spring to pretty much a week ago. So let's go ahead and start this one off. Early spring, I'm heading out to TSC pick up a paddle boat for the girls. Enjoy. All right, we got this thing to fit in here pretty nice. Fit a lot better than I thought it would. Got her all strapped down, let's get her home. Surprise the girls. Alright, enough of all that happy crap. You can see behind me that the scene has kind of changed slightly. That last footage you just saw was early spring and we are now almost to the end of summer. So it's been a couple of months and this footage is a little bit spread out. Now I have done a couple things to the pond to try to get it looking a little bit better. See back at some of that old footage, the pond water is really murky looking, kind of a brown muddy look to it. We actually have a neighbor that was building a house about two lots down. I'm guessing they didn't have the proper erosion control in place. So I know that we got a lot of clay runoff from there, which actually feeds our pond. So that murky brown color probably has a lot to do with that. And I know what you might all be thinking, that pond kind of looks like shit. It does look like shit. It's driving me absolutely nuts. Along with this disgusting little rock landscaping area with the railroad ties. So what I'm trying to do is just slowly chip away at this pond and get it to continuously look a little bit better and better every day. You can see along this disgusting railroad tie, little shoreline here, retaining wall, whatever you want to call it. They did a really half-assed job, doesn't surprise me. And the water level actually used to be right up to that wood railroad tie, but you can see it's receded quite a bit. And we're about a good eight inches away from the bottom of that overflow pipe. Now that riprap wall back there, over there you can see it's kind of grown up a little bit since early spring i haven't really been doing a very good job of maintaining that i need to get out there and spray that with some weed killer and i got some vegetation coming in here on the shorelines got a little bit of algae right here and there's quite a bit more all along that shoreline so the algae is my main concern i want to get rid of that algae oh oh damn it Anybody see that? This whole area, just a complete cluster f That'll be completely redone. And you'll notice I have a stump right in the middle of the water, another one there, and another one right over there. So I would like to leave that one just for a little fish structure. The, the turtles like to climb up on that one, do some sunbathing, but that one looks disgusting. I definitely want to rip that one out if I can. And right around that area, there was a tree that had fallen in the water. So I went ahead and I got the Coyote CK2610. I paddled out there in the paddle boat, tied off a sling to it, and I yanked that tree right out of the water, I drug it up on the shoreline over there, and dumped that thing off in the fire pit. I know that tree is good for fish structure, but this isn't a pond out in the middle of the woods. This is literally 50 foot from the back of our house, and that was just a huge eyesore. I don't know if you can see all those greedy little bastards down there. I started feeding them with fish food, and now they just follow me around the edge of the pond all day. My little buddies, you just gotta feed them, and then they'll love you. Same thing happened with my kids. Started feeding them. I can't get rid of them. So other than yanking that tree out of the water, the other biggest difference that you're probably noticing is that the pond is not that murky brown color anymore. I threw a couple of dye packets in there and it made a huge difference. Within probably two to three hours, the pond started to turn like a bluish green color. 
and now it's pretty much maintained like a nice dark green color. It looks pretty natural like this. Oh yeah, here's the paddle boat that I purchased probably four months ago. It's gotten used maybe eight times. Usually it just sits right here, so that was money well spent. Oh, honey! So the next big upgrade for the pond today is going to be hopefully getting the algae under control and getting some more oxygen in this pond. And to do that, we're gonna be installing an aerator. Now, I don't know anything about aerators, but I do know someone who does, and that's Adam over at Indy Farm Life. So I'm gonna load up the family in the truck. It's about a two hour drive. He is also in Indiana. We're gonna drive over there. We actually have a nice little family weekend planned over there with Adam and one other YouTuber, which you'll see here in a minute. So let's hop in, go check out his setup and get some more information on aerators. Make sure my kid didn't fall in. Ready? Safety first. Yeah, I'm ready. Take you ready? All right, so we are here at the Indy Farm Life compound. You can see he's got a beautiful pond back here. This is Adam. He's got a YouTube channel and he has a ton of footage on the complete pond build, which is really cool. I will leave a link for his channel down in the description. He's so, never watched it. He's never seen my channel. <laughs> I'm going to subscribe this weekend. <laughs> so Adam, what is the secret to keeping such a beautiful pond here? Uh, water. You need lots of water to have a pond look like this. That's step one. I came here just to see what a full pond looks like. So what Adam did here from Indy Farm Life, he did the exact opposite of what Adam from Hometown Acres did. <laughs> and he's got quite a success here. Now, yeah. I'm in the process of putting an aerator in my pond. Uh, how do you feel that the aerator helps your pond? I mean, do you think I'm going to get some pretty good results with it? I think you'll be happy. So our aerator's been in our pond for a year and a half, maybe and we went the rocking piston style. So there's the rocking piston, which is the best for the super deep water. We're about 20 feet, maybe 25 in places. Uh, you can use diaphragm pumps, which are kind of like a septic tank pump, but they're good for like eight to 10. And then there's rotary, rotary vein, which are extremely efficient and have great long lives, but you're gonna max out like 15, 18 feet. Um, yeah, put the rocking piston in, it's been fantastic. The water is fully mixed. I think it turns about one and a half times one to one and a half times a day or so. Could you explain to us what you have going on in here? In here, I have an aerator. No <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned. With old ponds, the water will stratify. And if you turn an aerator on full bore and just let it go, you're gonna bring up all that deoxygenated water yeah. and all at once. And you're gonna bring it up to where the fish live and you're gonna kill them all off. Start it for 30 minutes the first day, then an hour the next day, two hours, four hours, eight hours, until you get to 24 seven. So what this thing does is it takes air from the atmosphere and it puts it in the bottom of the pond. No sh And then it comes to the top of the pond. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> Adam's basically an engineer. <laughs> now, how do you feel that the aerator does with the weed control around your shorelines? I don't know that the aerator does a lot for shoreline vegetation growth. Um, you know, I, I have some chemicals that you can spray. And the pond dye helps. The pond dye does a wonderful job at stopping light penetration from really getting into the depths of the pond. Uh, I, I throw bacteria in it every 45 or 60 days, which has been immensely helpful. And now how, I mean, obviously your pond is extremely blue. How much pond dye do you put in and how often? Uh, I'm on about a, every 60 day cycle. I, two and a half gallons, I buy a jug from Tractor Supply. So today is Saturday. I just dyed this, I think Thursday evening. So you can see how blue it is. It's about the peak blueness that you're gonna see. So you said that the aerator running costs you about 20 bucks a month. And then what about the pond dye? So I'm kind of looking at like a monthly cost to keep your pond looking this good. Yeah, and I've been thinking about putting together a video to that effect. I'm kind of a belt and suspenders kind of guy. So I use these bacteria blocks, which I have some at the house we can look at. Um, each one treats about five acre foot of water and they're like $65 on Amazon or so. So roughly 250 bucks every 45 to 60 days is what I'm throwing in with those. And then the pond dye at Tractor Supply, which 
is about 55 or 60 bucks thing after tax for two and a half gallons so if you pull those two together those are the main things that are going into the pond yeah but once you obviously get it under control like you have it it's a lot easier to maintain it's, it it's a long game yeah, yeah. it's you yeah. got to stay ahead of it you know come march of every year you need to get on it if you're waiting until may to treat the algae right by june you're gonna have a problem on your hands you got to catch up but well hey adam thanks for having me yeah it's been a blast out here yeah, it's been and a great if, time. If you want some great information on ponds and pond maintenance, make sure you check out Adam's channel. Like I said, I will have a link in the description. There's some beer right there, I think. Oh, that's empty. Yeah, well, that's mine. We need some fresh Keystone I want some here. I want some of that twisted tea that Hometown has over there. He's done a different program than we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in the pool. <laughs> All right, we're back here now from Indy Farm Life. We had an absolute blast that weekend. Adam and his family are great. He's a super smart guy, great sense of humor, and he's got some really good information on his channel. Now, let's talk about what we have in the box. As some of you may know, I have a relationship with Viver. If you have not seen Viver's website, please go check it out. They have an insane amount of products on there. In my opinion, it's like a Harbor Freight on steroids. It's all online. They have got tons of stuff on that website. So I found a really nice aerator setup on their website. I emailed them and they were nice enough to send this thing out for us to try. So that's what we're going to be working with today. So let's get this thing opened up and see what the hell came in this box. Thank you Doug from One Eye Customs. He gifted me this very cool switchblade knife, which is legal in Indiana. It's actually a pretty safe knife. Alright, what the hell do we have here? Some foam. Looks like we've got the diffuser, or part of it, right here. Stainless steel. Looks like it's well built. Got our airline. Uh, don't know how long this is. We'll find out. 3 8 rubber welding hose. Must be some tough shit. Instructions. You know how we feel about instructions. <laughs> some valves. Some Teflon. It's like a canuter valve. Nope, that's an air filter. Looks like another part of the diffuser set up right here. Comes with a timer that you can plug into an outlet, which I will be using temporarily. This is not going to be my permanent setup, but I'm glad it came with it because now I don't have to buy it. Oh, come on! <sighs> Heavy duty. And the heart of the operation. And of course, I will have a link for this setup down in the description. All right, I'm gonna get this thing all put together as much as I can right here in the shop. Otherwise, let's get back out to the site there by the pond and see what we need to do to prep the ground and get this thing ready. I know, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do some digging. All right, just to get our bearings straight, obviously the pond, the house, the paddle boat that doesn't get used, and a bunch of really, really shitty landscaping, which is all going to get redone. So they recommend that the aerator goes in an area where it's not gonna get rained on, and it's not in direct sun. There is a tree right here that casts some shade on it, but I'm gonna be cutting this tree down. Actually, I'm gonna be cutting all these trees down that are next to the house and those disgusting bushes. You know how I feel about a big bush, but I wanna put that aerator right there. I'm gonna remove these two railroad ties coming down so I could trench across. I'm gonna trench through the rock here, down to the grass, into the pond, and the aerator setup may or may not be temporary. I'm gonna put some stone down and a nice pad and a small enclosure to go over it. That'll at least get me running for right now, and I'm gonna run an extension cord for the time being, but I will be running an actual hard line from my panel, which comes up right over there in the corner by the air conditioner. So first things first, I'm gonna get rid of this tree real quick. It'd be easy to cut down, and I'll yank out those ties, start pulling some stone away so I can start trenching this. I got all the stone pulled aside. Thankfully they had that fabric underneath there, it made it a lot easier to move that stone. At least they did something right there, even though everything looks like crap. And I got the coyote set up here so I can go ahead and scoop the dirt out, throw it in the bucket, and I'll just throw that in a pile somewhere. That way I'm not making a big, huge mess all along the side and getting mixed in with the stone. I'm gonna go ahead and hand trench this thing all the way out down to the pond. From the end of that stone, it's probably another 25 to 30 foot to the water. Well, the part I've been really looking forward to, 
I could have started yesterday, but today was supposed to be a lot hotter, so I figured it only makes sense to start today. Cue the time lapse. All right, I got the trench somewhat in here. That's where the pad's gonna be. And you see I got the trench. It's about close to 16 inches deep. I went kind of deep on it. There's definitely more work, but I got some other things I'm gonna be putting in this area, electrical, some more drain work, and I wanted this to be a little bit deeper so I could hopefully kind of ride right over it. Now I got the bucket full. I'm gonna go dump it. I got a little pile started over there. And I'm gonna to try to use the tractor as much as I can to continue this trench from here out to the water. Even if I could just get like a foot down, it would save a pretty good amount of manual labor. All right, the trench is done. I must say that was the most fun I've had in a long time. And toward the end there, I actually figured out a pretty easy way to get this trench done. I wish I would have thought of it sooner because it was working great. So now I'm gonna get this thing measured so I know exactly how much pipe I need to go get. We'll get this thing buried. Holy sh Well, my guess was off. That trench was actually 80 feet long. I didn't get that. Did you try Shut again? up, Siri, you dumb bitch. And that took me about four hours to dig that. Luckily, between my new method with the girls and the tractor, I was able to make fairly quick work of the bottom 30 foot or so, but this upper section and the landscaping, that sucked pretty bad. And I got the blisters to prove it. All right, so I went to Home Depot to get some electrical PVC, some one inch, and when I was there, for one, that stuff is crazy expensive, and I realized that I had some leftover poly that I had gotten a long time ago that I have no idea what I'm gonna do with, and it's one inch. So it is yellow for gas line, but I really don't care I'm gonna throw a tracer wire in here with it just so I could locate this if I wanted to. But even though it's not a gas line, this will work. It's exactly what I need. It's gonna save me some money. Picked up some grass seed to touch up the trench, even though that's all gonna get redone, but I just don't know when, probably next year. And I got a temporary enclosure. I'm going to use this storage tote, put it upside down, put a little bit of ventilation in here, maybe throw a rock or something on top of it. And this is gonna be my temporary enclosure for the aerator. So let's get this poly in the ground so I can get all this dirt back in the trench and get it reseeded. Whoa, that was a big fish ring. Go give me that blue shovel. I guess I am strong. You think so? Yeah. You can't even carry it, let alone use it. I am worn out. Got the fabric back down, all the landscaping back in, good enough for now. So there's my stub up right there, I got my tracer wire. All I gotta do is put some ag lime down, level that out, and then I'm actually going to steal these pavers right here. Just temporary, but they serve no purpose right here. See them hanging out, they're waiting for food. All right, so overall, it's quite a bit of work for a day. I'm gonna go drink some beer. All right, it's the next day, and it's going to be mid 90s today. It's about 87 right now. And I figured what a good day to throw some boots on, 
pair of jeans and a black t-shirt and stand out in the sun. So here we are. Now, next step is going to be putting down a little bit of a pad right here. And again, this is all temporary until I redo all this landscaping. But I'm gonna get all this set in place, get those little pavers in place so we can set the aerator on top of it and get all this stuff hooked up. So again, cue the time lapse. All right, that was about realistically 25 minutes worth of work and I am completely soaked in sweat. I could literally wring my shirt out. It is so freaking hot out here. It's not perfect, it is temporary, but it looks pretty decent for a 25 minute little platform. It'll definitely last until I can get all this landscaping rebuilt. So let's head out by the other end, by the pond. I got a little section of pipe I still have to add and then we could pull this air hose through get the diffuser set out in the water, get this thing hooked up, and finally fire it up. Well, my work boots, they just weren't hot enough, so I went ahead and threw on my muck boots, and they definitely did the trick. All right, so I got a piece of one inch Schedule 40 electrical PVC right here. It's got the bell end, and when I was at Home Depot, I actually grabbed a piece of one inch poly gas pipe, and it fits perfectly into this bell end, so I got kind of lucky there. I know it's kind of hodgepodge, but all this is is a raceway for an airline. It's really not a big deal. And it's actually kind of nice that this is straight versus the poly having a little bit of a curl into it. So this will be perfect to add to the end of it to get it to sit nice and straight in the water. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this thing on and then we'll push that airline through. Oh, hey little dragonfly. Pretty <clears throat> strong. Come on, there you go. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, she's biting. See there, a nice tight fit. Now I'm gonna shove that airline through. Well, better late than never. Looks like the uh, sun's starting to move around. We actually have some shade here now. Probably should have just waited to do this. All right, I'm gonna try my luck at pushing this down the pipe. I got a couple things going for me. The pipe is running downhill and there are no hard fittings, no hard 90s, 45s. It's all smooth, easy transitions. So as long as I can keep this hose fairly clean, I think I can push it through. It's all oily. The hell's the oil for? The oil actually helps on there. I feel much better having some kind of a raceway in there in case this airline becomes damaged. I don't have to dig up my whole yard again. It's right here. It's right here. Yippee guy, mother. I was expecting to have way more hose than this. Ah, oh, it's a dead mouse. That's disgusting. Oh. Oh, stuff smells like shit. All right, I have all the stuff I need to get the diffuser in the water. Let me show you what I got. So what I did was I took that diffuser got a stainless steel plate on the bottom of it and I went ahead and tap conned it into a cinder block and then I took this synthetic rope that I had laying around and I tied it off to the cinder block so that I can lift it like this and slowly set it down in the water until it sits on the bottom and then that way for one it's weighted and the cinder block will hold it a good eight inches off the bottom so that that diffuser is not just sitting in that muck and then what I'll do is I'll take the other end of the synthetic rope and I'll tie it off somewhere either on one of these tree stumps or if it'll reach the shoreline. That way I can easily grab this thing, yank it out of the water if I need to make any repairs or any kind of maintenance. Now these are all tips that I got from Adam over on Indie Farm Life. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for a video that he made installing his aerator. And he gives a whole lot more information on the whole aerator setup, different style pumps, different style diffusers, and a whole bunch of other information. So I highly recommend you go check that video out. Or don't, I really don't give a shit. Now, I did find some other air hose. All this is is airline, but it's 3 8 just like the airline that they gave us in that Viver kit. And I have a coupling with some hose clamps that we're gonna go ahead and connect these together and I'm gonna wrap the out of it in tape. It's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be all one piece. I just didn't realize it was gonna be that far of a run up to the house. Now, this airline is not weighted, so what I'm gonna do to weight this thing down, so I'm gonna use these nuts right here. Got a big old set of nuts. I'm gonna slide these over the hose, tie wrap them to it, in a couple of different spots and that should be enough weight to keep it weighted down and I should still be able to pull that line up it's not too much weight so I think these nuts will work pretty good so I'm gonna get all this assembled we'll get that paddle boat out 
get this thing dropped in so we can wrap this thing up already. All right, go ahead and hop in. You're sitting right there. I need a counterweight. I don't care. It's tiny. Yeah, there you go, good job. For anyone who wants to leave a comment about my daughter not having a life jacket on, don't even leave it, because I really don't care. That's why I'm here. She falls in, I'm going after her, and she could swim. Okay, we don't want to go out too far, oh boy. You almost went out by yourself. This is gonna be kind of tricky. All right, I'm gonna need you to pedal. Paddle. Huh? I'll steer. Go ahead and paddle. Paddle. Backwards paddle. Paddle. You gotta paddle faster than that. One. All right, stop right there. All right, paddle, paddle, paddle. Paddle backwards, paddle backwards, backwards, backwards. Hard, hard, hard. I'm not paying you to screw around. All right, forward, forward, forward. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, 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 we're good. All right, paddle over to that shoreline. Looks like those nuts held that hose down pretty good. Bring it home, girly. All right, I got the drone up in the air. It's the moment of truth. Let's plug this thing in, see if we got bubbles. I love me some bubbles. She's running. We've got bubbles. That thing's pumping out some serious bubbles over there. I was not expecting that much. and. That is as close to center of the pond as I could get and I actually probed around to see how deep the pond was and that's the deepest spot. It's only like nine foot. The rest of the pond is anywhere from eight to six foot deep. So that is the deepest spot. It's kind of in the center. That's why I picked that spot. Did I say spot too many times? Well, as you can see, the pond aerator is working perfectly, but that's gonna wrap this one up for today. Now, I will be redoing the enclosure for the aerator, so I will be doing a couple of updates in a couple of weeks to see how the pond has changed with the aerator, and I'll also show you the better version of the little enclosure that I'll make for that aerator. So if you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe. If you found this video entertaining or helpful, please hit that like button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. So if we pour Keystone in there, theoretically, you it's could. gonna be pumping Keystone you know, out to these fish. You know, I don't remember you offering me one. Take this milk. There's no Keystones rude. left. Drink that. Hey, you want this good bunch in the house? You can have this. Do you pop this on? Where you want me to put it? Wherever I don't have to clean it. Afterwards. I can tell you one thing. <laughs> I'm definitely. Or you can have this one I've already opened, but this one's not open. So would you rather do my backwash, or would you rather have a cold, fresh Miller Light? Well, I can't use any of this footage if I drink this. We'll tap the Rockies. <laughs> I don't know. That's a Coors slogan, but that's a Miller, so. Oh, I do. do with that what you will. You're having too much fun with that little fuzz hole on you. Well, you gave it to me. You know what? Neither one of them are Bud Light, so. It's true. You had a bush that's close. <laughs> We'd all be prancing around here with our crazy shirts <laughs> on. This tastes like straight goat piss. Uh -huh. <laughs> Speaking of, where's your twisted tea? I can't find it. I think naturally one of the women grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny because I went to, I was going to tell you, I went to pick up twisted tea for him the other night and I was getting your Keystone. I was like, oh, I went and got Keystone and diesel and some motor oil. And then I found some twisted tea and tampons for him. <laughs> <laughs> the lady's like, good choice. <laughs> At, hey, and like, no. you know what I always go back to about overthinking <laughs> Andrew Carameta, Carameta. He didn't think about <laughs> He just <laughs> goes. <laughs> and he's got millions of followers. Yep. I don't know who it is. Andrew Camarada? Uh, Never heard of him? He does. Never heard anything awesome? Been doing our property. I'm and a it's refined just individual. Freaking, I can tell. Mm -hmm.